so uh, good morning uh, uh, everyone so um, uh, without much more introduction i'll just uh, go how to set up a video eurodynamic or a eurodynamic setup for adults and children uh, there is no uh, actual in principle difference but uh, uh, needless to say for the children it needs to be a little bit more congenial environment more i i would add music i would add uh, some nice posters and uh, a less scary faces so for eurofilmetry we uh, need a small toilet like space or better still if you have an existing toilet to give the uh, most uh, natural uh, feel of a toilet it's preferable to keep it separate and independent from eurodynamics machine for obvious reasons uh, to keep it clean because otherwise it can be a source of infection a dedicated sanitation staff there uh, therefore is a must it's uh, a good idea to uh, do a test run first thing in the morning although at times it is difficult and uh, the most of the uh, uh, imported machines they have self calibration so generally it is not required but uh, at times it is said that you after every uh, 10 voids you calibrate the machine you can just pour 300 ml at physiological speed about 15 ml per sec uh, second and check the reading of the machine i'll come to the uh, the ics uh, guidelines on that a uh, parts of the eurofilmetry uh, you have base plate or transducer various types are available most commonly gravimetric or rotating disc are available in the market and out of these most common is gravimetric uh, there is a beaker funnel uh, a, a comfortable seat and then either you have a basic uh, eurofilmetry which with no uh, uh, a lot of customizable software you have a processor then you have an automatic printer uh, these are very cost effective uh, practically uh, useful but the problem is that if there is any error so ap apart from the last reprint you don't have any data left then you have more sophisticated machines whether wired or wireless so uh, uh, it's good for record keeping you can post process the data the problem is sometimes uh, we do face uh, software error while uh, doing the test or some bluetooth uh, connectivity issues so that can lose the data so ICS is clearly defined uh, the accuracy rates of for eurofilmetry rates. It should be within one ml per second uh, error. The accuracy of audit volume should not be more than two ml or three percent, whichever is uh, more accurate. Uh, these are the other parameters. The bandwidth of flow measurement should be between one and five hertz. Now uh, we can buy any machine like Indian machine or imported machine, whatever our pocket selects. But uh, it should meet these basic minimum criteria. And post void residue is obviously an essential part of uh, uh, your eurofilmetry measurement. Now it could be uh, either a dedicated data scanner. Uh, there are multi multiple imported ones are available, but these are prohibitively costly. Or now some Indian uh, machines are uh, also available. Or if you have in your setup a small ultrasound machine for multiple purposes, you can use uh, the same machine for uh, for uh, measuring the post void. I would uh, emphasize here that uh, unless you are planning to calibrate the patient for some reason, uh, please don't use catheters for measuring post void residue. That would be uh, uh, really invasive unless it's really necessary. Now, after that brief uh, thing about eurofilmetry, multi channel eurodynamics, the size of the room is important. The facilities of the uh, inside the room are important to consider when we are uh, uh, planning a new room. And approximately 10 by 12 feet, in my experience, is a bare optimum. Plus, an attached toilet uh, uh, should be there in a eurodynamics machine. You should have uh, a good space for eurodynamics cart, a printer cart, a eurodynamic chair if you have a cupboard or a maturation chair in addition, a wash basin area, and for um, a trolley. Printers, a laser color printer, if you have a lot of money, you can go for a laser color printer because a report should be multi-colored uh, for, uh, for a good feedback to the reader. Or uh, in our setup, we use ink tank color uh, printer, which is very cost-effective for a large volume uh, printouts. So uh, these are cost-effective in the long run. With a fluoroscopy, if you plan a video aerodynamic study, then you need an extra space, not only to keep the flow machine, but also to be able to uh, roam it around uh, in the room. So 15 by 15 feet is a bare optimum. Our preferred uh, would be 20 by 20 plus a space for attached toilet. Now, uh, coming to the aerodynamic chairs, 
so again you if, if you have money you can go for a carbon fiber made uh, dedicated aerodynamics machine which can give a lot of uh, provisions or uh, including standing to completely line down and anything uh, in between but uh, they may cost uh, uh, up to two and a half million rupees so that that's a lot of investment so uh, one can go for small you know uh, uh, customizations like a wooden chair or a plastic chair or maybe a stool over which the c arm can be rotated the patient can squat and void or stand and void so all these things are possible so we have to be intelligent in uh, in trying to plan uh, aerodynamics machine even if you have money for flow but an extra 2.5 million rupees uh, would be a lot of money there should be curtains needless to say when you open the room and then suddenly you see the patient cart uh, is not good so uh, ample uh, curtains ample plugs ample ups connections because there should be uninterrupted power supply you don't want your uh, study to just uh, uh, wash off uh, just because the light went off there should be a clean drainage and a sewage drainage connection sewage drainage obviously if there is an attached toilet so even if there is no attached toilet it should be very close by so that the patient doesn't have to run uh, for a long distance then most of us uh, don't have video dynamics for obvious cost issues and space issues and myself uh, uh, I've, all my life i've used uh, uh, cystograms separately for uh, want of availability of uh, video dynamics but with experience i have not felt the need or uh, uh, want of a video dynamic machine because uh, one it is cost effective and potentially it is even better because you are doing a catheterless voiding study so that uh, uh, that could be a, a bit better a better resolution uh, patient is more comfortable without all the paraphernalia attached so may, may actually void in a better way but there are some problems obviously it's inconvenient for the patient to separate locations to separate catheterizations then you have to completely fuse the two uh, images uh, you are not having a real time uh, uh, imaging then you have to coordinate with other departments you don't want the patient to do you know you study wait for the for the uh, for uh, going for an mcug so better to uh, a better coordination is required but in my experience uh, uh, and had a discussion with a lot of stalwarts in the field uh, it does not really matter as long as you can give good uh, interpretation of these two combined uh more than uh, in my experience more than whether you have a video dynamics or a separate mcg mcg a proper positioning of the c arm compared to the patient's voiding position is uh, more important like uh, end on is uh, seldom uh, a good position a 45 degree or somewhat oblique position so that entire urethra is uh, visible properly is uh, needed so uh, from the urodynamics room uh, coming to uh, the catheters so for a basic minimum we need um, at least three uh, channels one is for even if you are not doing emg we need for flow a p abdomen and a p recycle so either you may have a dedicated cystometry catheter you uh, if you have money you can reuse uh, you can single use it or uh, you can actually re-sterilize them these are very good quality catheters throwing them away after one use uh, seems uh, 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 not good uh, for the bladder catheters then you have balloon rectal catheters or you could um, use two infantile tubes there is nothing wrong with it so for example if you use two five french uh, catheter uh, feeding tubes it does not mean that you are obstructing the urethra a lot because it is not equal to 10 french the two five french it is basically approximately equal to 7 french so it uh, 25 french is equal to 7 french of uh, catheter in the lumen or if you have a 15 and 16 then it's uh, approximately 8 french you can use if you uh, if it's available you can use 4 french catheter you may uh, remove one catheter in the very study all that has its own problems so uh, if you don't have money for uh, these fancy double lumen catheters uh, it's not lost then rectal catheter obviously you don't uh, use a single use uh, uh, company provided catheter you can easily take a, a bigger like 9 or 10 french infant pin tube with glove finger uh, fix it properly and make a small cut uh, and it works as well actually sometimes better than uh, the customized uh, the, uh, the the company made catheters and very cost effective and there is no problem of hygiene just use and throw then uh, air charged air charged uh, uh, very less commonly used in india because of the prohibitive cost when i was in middle east uh, we used to use that 
because then you don't need uh, you just open it if it's not functioning just throw it away and uh, so but these are not practicable in our society although they do give a lot of uh, i mean they're very convenient there's no water mess you don't have to zero it to uh, the uh, superior border of cubic synthesis etc but very expensive then uh, if you are uh, so this is how the minimal graph looks like if you're a person doing a urethral pressure proclamatory also, so you need a additional uh, uh, lumen catheter, like a triple lumen catheter. There, uh, it is difficult to save cost. The only way is you uh, reuse, re-sterilize properly. Uh, we do re-sterilize using uh, LTSF or plasma, whichever is available after proper mechanical cleaning, and these go on and on without uh, causing any problem. And uh, uh, you can use a puller, whether it's an electromechanical puller or you can use your own hands uh, at one one centimeter uh, pulling, you can add more dots to the uh, these UPP catheter. UPP catheters typically come with the one centimeter marking. You can you can add the, with the indelible ink uh, uh, 0 0.5 0 0.5 centimeters. You can pull out. Uh, that's how you can do it. Uh, puller at times uh, it's very convenient for the patient because it gives a lot of privacy. Otherwise, uh, it's uh, at times it is inconvenient also because the, uh, the, uh, the catheter may, uh, you know, uh, dislodge and uh, can be a problem. It's difficult to sterilize the polar uh, at the point when you're attaching the uh, thing to polar. And this is how the minimum uh, the, uh, uh, urodynamics will look like. You, have, you need to have one extra channel, so you need to have three pressure transducers, then only you can do a good uh, useful pressure profile. This is a triple human catheter. Unfortunately, we don't uh, we cannot save cost here because these are uh, uh, highly specialized triple human catheters. You can use it at double human catheters are also available, but I in my experience, triple human catheters are the best uh, possible catheters for uh, uh, this thing. We have a minimum size seven French catheter available from MMS. It's quite soft and gives nice readings. Air charge catheters are also available. Uh, again, the cost is prohibitive, and these are slightly stiffer catheters, slightly more uh, potentially traumatic to insert into patient. And particularly, if we are talking about a child; it will be uh, difficult for a child to uh, accommodate these big catheters. Then, coming to EMG activity, EMG uh, is uh, essential for a pediatric uh, uh, urodynamic practice. Uh, the problem with EMG is that uh, the calibration is uh, uh, very difficult. Uh, a lot of times they give uh, 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 artifactual readings, uh, they, they go bad, you need a lot of maintenance. But if you can do that, then it's a good uh, uh, addition to your uh, urodynamic setup. Um, a concentric needle electrode would be ideal, but uh, it is not ideal because it's a lot of painful, very difficult to place it in the right place, and most of the time, surface electrodes uh, do the job. So, uh, coming to the uh, number of channels, so you have one um, auto, you have one uh, irrigation pump, you have uh, two or three uh, transducers for pressure measurement, you have uh, one EMG if possible. And uh, of course, a urethrometer. All these are assessed. And uh, the last one, which is uh, video. So uh, the minimum would be P uh, sorry, P abdomen and P recycle, and a uroflow uh, definitely should add EMG if possible. Uh, if video is possible, nothing like it. But otherwise, MCU uh, is almost as good. And lastly, um, uh, lastly, if you have uh, uh, a UPP, you can add one extra channel. So for accuracy, uh, IECS has given good um, guidelines on it. So it should be, uh, the pressure should be within one centimeter uh, accuracy or 3% uh, of the measured uh, uh, value. Uh, uh, it should be, you know, whichever is better, whichever is more accurate. The ranges are written and uh, the sample rate of volume measurement should be two hertz or more. So all these, I don't have to cram it up because it's, uh, it, these are available uh, on the ICS website. For calibration, again, these imported machines are uh, uh, automatic, automated uh, calibration machine, but at times it's good to keep checking. Uh, for the water-based system, it's very easy. You just measure it, uh, just take the, uh, uh, the water column up by 50 centimeter and see that what your machine is showing. That would uh, tell you whether it's uh, well calibrated or not. So for setting up a study, maintaining sterility, maintaining privacy, Talk, communication, talk. I think uh, making the environment congenial for the child, 
talking, trying to allay the anxiety, uh, although it's not possible to make it zero unless the patient is anesthetized. So uh, now we should make a lot of effort in that. Sh uh, uh, shape the genitals in perineums for adults. Maintaining sterility while placing the bladder catheters, it cannot be overemphasized. Placing balloon in the rectum, make it sure it's not in the anus. Uh, fix the catheters properly, as close to the orifices as possible. If UPP catheter is available, either uh, if the puller is uh, available, fix it to the puller. Otherwise, uh, with hand, it's perfectly fine. Then lastly, uh, zeroing and flushing and balancing. So zero to the atmosphere. And then, so first flush properly, zero to the atmosphere, and then uh, connect it to the transducer at the superior border of pubic symphysis. So to conclude, it is an essential diagnostic tool for comprehensive low unit tract urology practice. A proper planning of setup is desirable with adequate space, adequate drainage, approachable clean toilet, uninterrupted power supply. Investment optimization is prudent, like disposable UDS catheters versus PD tubes, air charged or uh, with transducers, UDS chair versus maturation chair and uh, chair and trolley. Currently using maturation chair and trolley, so it works perfectly fine. A video on a separate MCUG and a really recent uh, expensive UDS chair versus wooden or plastic chairs. So that is up to you. But without compromising sterility, privacy, and results. Antibiotics are not essential uh, adjunct to the uh, urodynamics, which we of, uh, often uh, give, an, uh, give, we give an excuse that we don't have that much of cleanliness. That's why we're giving antibiotics. So actually, we should work on it. We should improve our sterility rather than uh, uh, giving more antibiotics, except for there are a few incidences where you have to, but most of the time it is not required. Thank you very much.